Yes, guys, turn to problem number 10. The following is a summarized balance sheet of group companies and other information provided. Drop the consolidated balance sheet as on 31st March 2012. Group companies with two subsidiaries X, Y, and Z. Holding company is X. Check the investments on the asset side. X holds investment in Y. X holds investment in Z. Y holds investment in Z. So it's a chain holding. Indirect subsidiary being Z, direct subsidiary being Y. Come to the liability side, there are two reserves, one reserve and a PNL account. Reserve in the sense is general reserve, general reserve and PNL. And if you observe, the typical part now appears is your liability side. Check your intercompany balances and compare with the asset side items. What are those intercompany balances? Y limited balance in Z limited on the liability side is 15. That means I need to have it on the asset side in Y limited balance sheet as Z limited. Check how much is it? Z limited in Y limited column on the asset side is 10. Now, is that why cash in transit? No. I can't call, call, it, call it as a cash in transit because asset side should be higher to call it as a cash in transit. But what is happening now? The asset side is lower, liability side is higher. Now, there cannot be any specific name which is given to it. We call it as unreconciled balances. Unreconciled balance is 5. That is intercompany balances which is not reconciled. Now you can't sit and reconcile all that. So reconciliation will just leave it there. We'll just call it as unreconciled item under non-current liabilities. Same way Z limited check. Z limited in X limited balance sheet on the liability side is 50. Similar way I need asset side. Z limited balance sheet. X limited is only 30. 20 is again unreconciled balance. So total unreconciled balance cancelling the intercompany balance is 25. Next. Read the adjustments. X holds 1,60,000 shares and 30,000 shares respectively in Y limited and Z limited. Y limited holds 60,000 shares in Z limited. These investments were made on 1st July 2009. And on that day, the following were the balances. Reserve is 20 and 10. PNL is 30 and 16. On December 2011, in December 2011, Y invoice goods to X Limited for 40 lakhs at cost plus 5, 25%. With the closing stock of X Limited include such goods valued at 5 lakhs. So remaining stock is sold. Unrealized profit should be only calculated to the extent of that 5 lakhs value. Z sold Y Limited an equipment costing 24 lakhs at a profit of 25% on a selling price. On 1st Jan 2012, depreciation at the rate of 10% per annum was provided by Y Limited on this equipment. Bills payable of Z Limited represent acceptances given to Y Limited out of which Y discounted bills worth 3 lakhs. What is Z Limited bills payable? Check bills payable in Z. 5. Entire 5 are acceptance in favor of Y. But out of 5, Y has actually discounted 3 lakh bills. So how much can I cancel? 2 lakhs. Debtors of X include 5 lakhs being that due to due from Y limited and Y pro, and lastly X proposes a dividend of 10%. So there's an intercompany owings of 5 lakhs from debtors and creditors which should be cancelled and finally a proposed dividend of X limited to the extent of 10%. Now all the time we have been seeing unrealized profit on stock. Now you have unrealized profit on equipment. It's an asset. It is a depreciable asset to be more specific. Whenever I have to calculate unrealized profit on a depreciable asset, this creates a problem. Let's try to understand what happens. So, put a heading as unrealized profit. On depreciable assets. Simple logic you understand guys. I'll take a clear simple example. Let's say I have a holding company. This holding company had a depreciable asset. I'll call it as an asset. That's it. Asset for value of 100. This asset having a value of 100 was sold to subsidiary S at 120.
So this asset now appeared in the books of S at 120. This asset gets cancelled and the PL of H Limited increased by 20. Correct? Because they are selling 100 rupee asset at 120. Let's say one year is gone. Actually, the profit made is 20. But to get the unrealized profit, let's understand what happens at the end of the year. At the end of the year, understand the depreciation will be charged on this 120. Let's say this asset has been depreciated at the rate of 10%. So what happens to this asset now? S limited, once you charge depreciation at the rate of 10%, my PNL will reduce by 12 and my asset value will come down to 108. 10% depreciation, 12, 108 and the 12 rupees depreciation will reduce the PNL. If that asset was not sold, if that asset was not sold, H limited asset would have been 90 and the PNL would have been reduced by 10. Now understand. Now carefully understand this. If you basically observe the difference here and here. The difference is exactly how much is the difference? 18. And the PNL additionally reduced by 2. So how do we calculate unrealized profit here? What it says is unrealized profit is not 20 unrealized profit is only 18 because when we consolidate we need to ensure as if it is a recorded at cost what was the cost of the asset 100 which would have shown only 90 but your asset now is showing at 108 so i need to reduce it by 18 that is the unrealized profit now how did we get this unrealized profit of 18 is a question unrealized profit is 18 Simple guys. What was the total profit? 20. How much is the additional depreciation charged? 2. Then what is the unrealized profit? 18. So in a simpler sense I can say unrealized profit on asset on a depreciable asset can be calculated like this. It is profit on sale less depreciation on profit. I am not saying extra depreciation, I am directly saying depreciation on the profit. If you want, you can check. What was the profit on sale? 20. What is the depreciation percentage? 10. So what is the depreciation? 2. What is the answer? 80. Perfectly same answer you got. So write down this part. Unrealized profit in a depreciable asset is profit on sale of asset minus the amount of depreciation on the profit. You can take down this example and show that the asset should be recorded at 90 in the consolidated balance sheet and not at 108. So I need to reduce it to the extent of 18. Though the profit was 20, additional depreciation, my PNL reduced by 2.
Yes guys, so let's start solving that question. Check with the date of acquisition. Start with that. My date of acquisition. Check. The shares were acquired on 1-7-2009. Balance of the reserves are given, so go for the shareholding pattern. Shareholding pattern. For Y and Z. Number of shares held and percentage holding. Go on guys. How much does X limited hold? It is held by X, Y and minority. X in Y holds 1,60,000 shares. X in Z holds 30,000 shares. Y in Z holds 10,000 shares. Sorry, 60,000 shares. Pick up the number of shares, total number of shares. Everything are given in lakhs. Each share is 10 rupees. Should be given in thousands. Should have been given in thousands then. Is in lakhs. So the number of shares here are 2 lakhs. And number of shares given here are 1 lakh. Guys, each share is 100 rupees, guys, not 10 rupees. Yep. So, my minority interest is 40,000 here and 10,000 here. Get the percentages. This is 80% and 20%. Here is 30, 60, and 10. There is no adjustment to reserve if you observe clearly. Check for the adjustments first of all. What are the adjustments? Y limited invoice goods to X limited. So first one adjustment is unrealized profit. Unrealized profit. The profit is made by Y. So in your analysis of Y I have one adjustment. In the analysis of Z also I have an adjustment. In the analysis of Z I have an adjustment for unrealized profit on machinery. So two adjustments that's it. So one one in each. So reserve I will not analyze. Reserve directly I can put it in the distribution table. But it is the p and of both Y and Z we have to analyze. So let's start. Analysis of reserves. Of subsidiary. With respect to date of acquisition. That is 1-7-2009. Not so relevant guys because the reserves on that date are already given to you. First one is p &L. Okay, first one always the indirect subsidiary. I'll start with Z Limited. Under Z Limited start with p &L. Balance as on 31st March 2012. Check the balances on 31st March 2012. 31st March 2012 for Z Limited PNL is 40. Split. Balances on 1709 on the date of acquisition. Reserve PNL balance of Z Limited was 16. 
So profits post post acquisition is 24. One adjustment unrealized profit. Check Z Limited sold to Y Limited an equipment costing 24 lakhs at a profit of 25 percent on selling price. One fourth on selling price is one third on cost. So one third on cost of 24 lakhs, the profit they made is 8 lakhs. How do we get unrealized profit? We need to reduce the depreciation. When did he sell? When did he sell? First Jan 2012. What is the balance sheet date? 31st March 2012. So how many years depreciation? Three months depreciation should be considered. Only three months depreciation should be considered. So write down. unrealized profit on machinery profit they made is 8 because 24 lakhs costing machinery one third is a profit on cost or one fourth on selling price one third on cost is 8 minus the amount of depreciation charge 8 into what is the depreciation percentage? 10% into 3 by 12. Zero point 0.2 it is. So this will be 7.8 unabsorbed depreciation. Unrealized profit is 7.8. So there's a 16.2. The 16.2 is post acquisition profits. The 16 is pre acquisition profits. Then come to the analysis of Y limited reserves. Again, PNL. <coughs> balance as on 31st March 2012. Check the balance as on 31st March 2012. Y limited PNL is 50. On the balance sheet date, it was 50. Try to split. Balance as on date of acquisition 1709 straightforward is already given to you. PL balance in Y Limited is 30. So my profits post acquisition is 20. Only one adjustment that is unrealized profit now. But this unrealized profit is much simpler because it is unrealized profit on stock. Unrealized profit on stock. Calculate guys. The second para. I write below the table. Y limited invoice goods to X 40 lakhs at cost plus 25%. Guys it is 25% on cost but the goods are for sent for 40 lakhs. If you clearly see the closing stock of X included goods only 5 lakhs. I will not calculate profit on the entire 40 lakhs but only to the extent of the closing stock left out. So if 5 lakhs is the selling price and his profit made is 25% on the cost. So if it is one fourth on cost, it is one fifth on selling price. One fifth on five. One nineteen. Pre-acquisition and post-acquisition. You can go for distribution of reserves. Pre-acquisition and post-acquisition. Under post-acquisition, again a general reserve and a PL column. First start with Z. Two reserves. One is a reserve and the other one is PL. Check reserve. Reserve balance in the balance sheet of Z Limited is 30. On the date of acquisition, reserve is 10. So 10 pre 20 post. PNL we already analyzed 16 pre 16.2 post. 26, 20, and 
distributed between x and minority interest 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, by limited also similarly I have a reserve, I have a PNL. One second guys, I have taken the wrong percentages. Yep. My shareholding percentage in Z is 30, 60 and 10. I'll take that. X is 30. Y is 60. Minority interest is 10. Right. The distribution, I hope that is right. Now go for Y limited distribution. Y limited distribution, the first one is reserve. Second one is PNL. Last one, don't forget, share in post acquisition reserves of Z. Then strike a total. Check the reserve. Z limited reserve in the balance sheet is 40. But on the date of acquisition it was 20. So 20 pre, 20 post. PNL. PNL we have already analyzed for Y limited. Y limited PNL pre acquisition is 30. Post acquisition is 19. Now Y limited share and post acquisition reserves of Z are 12 and 9.72. This will total up to 50, 32 and 28.72. Use your shareholding pattern of 80-20 to distribute between X and minority interest. 80% X, 20% minority interest, 40 and 10, 6.4 and 25.6. Because this is 5.74 and 23. No, 5.744. Eh? 5.744 and this should be With that we come to the end of distribution of reserves. So we need to go for three working notes after this. <clears throat> Cost of control, minority interest and reserves for CBS. 
then we can go for finally the consolidated balance sheet. Cost of control, we need three columns. X in Y, X in Z and last is Y in Z. There is no dividend adjustment, so directly start with cost of investment. No deduction of pre-acquisition dividend or anything. Compare this with share in net assets. Share in net assets given as share capital and pre-acquisition reserves. Cost of investment, check the balance sheet on the asset side and pick up the values. X in Y is 180, X in Z is 40 and Y in Z is 80. My share in the net assets, yes guys, each one we are writing in lakhs. So X in Y, 1,60,000, 100 rupee share, 160. So 30,000 shares, 30 lakhs, 60,000 shares, 60 lakhs. Pre-acquisition reserves, X in Y, 40, X in Z, 7.8, Y in Z, 15.6. This one is 237.8 and 75.6. So capital reserve for the first one is 20, goodwill for the rest 2, 2.2 and 4.4. Net total I get a capital reserve 13.4. Minority interest. Minority interest in Y, minority interest in Z. Minority share in net assets given in the form of share capital and reserve again. Reserve split between pre-acquisition and post-acquisition reserves. Again under post-acquisition I will have a general reserve and p &L. Check the values, share capital, 40,000 shares, 100 rupees each, 40 lakhs, 40, 10,000 shares, 10 lakhs. Reserves and Y for minority, 10, 6.4 and 5.744, 10, 6.4, 5.744. 62.144 in Z 2.62 and 1.62 2.62 and 1.62 now this is 16.22 total minority interest totals up to 78.364 Then come to the last working note, reserves for CBS, maintain two columns, one is a general reserve or reserve and the second one is p &L. Always start with X limited balance of reserves, X limited balance of reserve 50 and 60. Share in post acquisition reserves of 
y and z share in post acquisition reserves of y Twenty-five point six, twenty-two point nine seven six. X in Z post acquisition six four point eight six. One adjustment. One adjustment is there. Last line. Dividend of ten percent on the share capital of three hundred. Dividend is thirty. Proposed dividend is 10% on 300 rupees share capital. Reduce 30. That should give you final answer. 76.2 is the general reserve total, and this is 77.836. Confirm with your figures and you can start your consolidated balance sheet which should tally. And do not forget to write proposed dividend. Proposed dividend should be written under current liabilities compulsory. There will be some unreconciled balances also which you get. Lengthy balance sheet, please be careful. Each time you write the figure, please be careful. Hmm? Consolidated balance sheet of X as on 31st March 2012. Yes, guys, the general reserve total is 81.6. Just check. This is 57.836. Go for the balance sheet. Equity and liabilities. Shareholders funds, share capital, equity share capital. Check exclamated equity share capital. I'm writing everything in lakhs. 300. Reserves. First reserve is capital reserve which we got in cost of control 13.4. A general reserve in the last working note 81.6. And PNL in the last working note is 57.836. My next liability is minority interest. We have just solved for the minority interest and the minority interest figure is 78.364. Non-current liabilities. Unreconciled balances. Intercompany balances under council. My intercompany balance on the liability side is 65. 15 plus 50. On the asset side is 30 plus 10. 40. 40 and 65. Under council balance is 25. 
there are two current liabilities to be written. One is bills payable and the other one is creditors. Both of them have adjustments, intercompany owings. Be careful. Bills payable, the adjustment is there in the last before para. Bills payable of Z, Z bills payable is 5, which are acceptances in favor of Y and Y discounted bills were 3 lakhs. Out of 5, 3 are going into banker's head. So I will have in my balance sheet only 2. So I can cancel only 2 from bills payable. So the bills payable is 13. Creditor, last line, 5 lakhs should be cancelled. So my creditors is 45. Proposed dividend, we forgot that. Proposed dividend, last item. We have just proposed dividend for X limited at 30. Assets, non current assets. And under non-current assets, tangible fixed assets. Yes, yes, what about the tangible fixed assets? Tangible fixed assets in the balance sheet. Fixed assets are 130, 150 and 100. Total is 380. There is no intangible assets or other non-current assets. Intangible assets is nil. Other non-current assets is also nil. What we have is current assets under which three heads, stock, debtors, guys one second, fixed assets we have an adjustment, fixed assets we have unrealized profit which should be reduced, what was the unrealized profit, 7.8 unrealized profit for Z, so you have to reduce that, so total though it is 380, I will write it as only 472.8, oh, 7.8. reduced no? 372.2 reduce it by 7.8 7.8 is unrealized profit then come to your current assets stock also we have to reduce guys there is unrealized profit in stock stock the task Bills receivable, uh, 
and finally cash and bank balance stock reduce it by 1 unrealized profit so 50 plus 20 plus 20 minus 1 is 89 data's intercompany owings last line 5 lakhs so reduce it by 5 it is 95 bills receivable reduce it by 2 intercompany owings that is 28 cash and bank balances combine everything 60 They'll give you total assets and total liabilities. Check. Balance sheet total is six forty four point two. Simple chain holding without dividend adjustment guys this problem is has not many adjustments only few adjustments are to regarding only unrealized profit one unrealized profit on stock and other one is unrealized profit on machinery that is a depreciable asset so these are the only two things which I have seen in this problem not a really complicated problem at all.